Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming. I'm Zaf Babin, and uh, we'll walk you through uh, about a very, very interesting initiative at, at uh, ADP uh, where we build uh, the data platform. And I think a lot of uh, the, the, the companies that presenting here talking about uh, data platform um, that they have on their own. So we'll share with you the, the ADP data platform. So let's start with uh, a little bit the introduction to uh, ADP. So I'll start with uh, a question. How, who is in, in here that's getting paid by ADP? <laughs> okay, so everybody knows that ADP is, uh, is a payroll company and we process uh, uh, one in every six em uh, US emplo empl em employee. Uh, we pay them, uh, you know, the paycheck. Uh, but um, one thing to know about ADP is that obviously we're big. Second, we, are, we have a history of innovation. We were the first one to, uh, to automate the payroll. Um, and uh, the, and uh, um, uh, the first uh, the, the 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 first time to create the mobile application for for managing a char, uh, and and on and on. ADP is always trying to innovate, and in in the case in the, this use case that we uh, we're going to present to you, it's also another example of innovation. Um, before I, I continue, so I like this presentation to be um, interactive as much as possible. So if you have a question, uh, we don't have a lot of slides here, but we have one slide that, we, that I wanted to share with you in detail with the architecture. Um, so please don't hesitate to, uh, to ask questions when you have it. So first of all, why it was important for ADP to have, uh, to have the data platform? Uh, prior to this uh, data platform, ADP was uh, operating in silos. Uh, data silos as, as also application silos, uh, business unit silos. And, um, but then we realized that ADP is sitting on a very, very strategic data asset. And having silos taking away the capability of utilizing this data strategically, U utilizing this data um, uh, for our clients as well as anywhere else to get the value of this data. So eliminating those silos uh, all of a sudden become priority. Um, obviously, as you know, when we have silos, we have data, uh, data duplication. Data duplication is, 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 a, is a major problem when you're talking about uh, uh, data quality, when you're talking about, um, when you're talking about uh, 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 a, a data quality as well as, uh, as a data consistency as well as efficiency. Um, so eliminate data duplication is also uh, was a major, data duplication in ADP was a major problem. Uh, eliminating it has a, a very uh, big advantage. Uh, the, other, the other big problem is data governance. Um, it's very difficult to, to run data governance on, on on silos data repositories and having centralized uh, uh, data governance rules, uh, data quality is, 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 is troublesome. You know, you really depends on each team to provide the, the, uh, uh, the data quality and you don't have consistent results. Um, Data exploration, as, as I mentioned before, silos um, did not give 
teams to see really what is all the data that's available in ADP. As, and as you can see, when we build the data platform, uh, all of a sudden teams across ADP could have realized how much data we have and how they can data mesh their data with other data from other teams. Um, the other thing is improving time to market. Um, when, when, when you need to build data application, there are th certain things that you need to do, data cleansing, uh, data presentation, and every team needs to do the same thing over and over again. So that's obviously increased the data, the time to market for every team uh, significantly. If you do it in a centralized data platform, you do it once and everybody else can uh, use it. So obviously we realize at ADP that um, we, have we, we have significant gain if we um, build data platform that will be centralized, will have single source of truth and uh, a single set of tools that provide um, a solution for all the team in IDP to, to benefit from. So then we started to deal with the challenges. Uh, ADP, ADP um, have significant amount of PII and SPII data. So when you, when you bring in now the data and you share it across the, the uh, enterprise, you know, you need to make sure that only people who need to access the data will have access to the data or can even see the data um, uh, and others uh, should not be able to see or access the data. Um, all of a sudden you have a central place where, uh, where you know, all the teams across ADP dependent from a production perspective, right? All of a sudden, if, if this data platform will fail, all of a sudden, you know, uh, 40, 50 applications of ADP um, gonna fail. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a major, uh, uh, major concern to, uh, uh, to ADP as a whole. The single, I guess you can call it maybe single uh, point of failure for a lot of other application. Um, data availability is a challenge. So as I mentioned, ADP, is a big company. We process about 15 petabytes uh, in our, our data platform, a lot of data. So data size is, is a concern. Data freshness is a, is a concern in, in several application. By the time the user change the data, we will need to process the data in, into the, uh, the Delta Lake and, and, and present it back in, let's say, analytic application within seconds. So data freshness is a, is a, is a big thing and um, be able to address those, uh, those requirements uh, need to have a very, very significant consideration uh, in, the, in the platform. Um, And uh, um, so, obviously, governance still still uh, still uh, an issue. Uh, application needs to know when the data is inaccurate. The applications uh, must uh, must know when uh, all of a sudden the data is being delayed. Uh, we need to create a, a good alerting mechanism for everybody who used the platform um, to, um, uh, to realize that the, uh, the platform is either, uh, that the data is, 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 is not as they, as the application is expecting it to do. So this is, 
this is framework that we need to build and needs to work day in, day out um, in order to serve all the application that, uh, that it's using. So um, the, the other big challenge, I would say, that we have, that we had, is, is mindset change. Because, you know, at ADP, we, you know, teamwork in, in a silo mode for a long time. Business unit had to take care of their business unit, you know, the data there used to be their data, and everyone was really selecting their own tools and, and, uh, and, and have control over their destination, their business destination. All of a sudden, we, we come and we're saying to, to teams, um, you know, why don't you bring the data to the platform and then use the data from our platform and use the tool that we provide to you and deliver on your business. So the first reaction would be, okay, so you guys are in, in my path for uh, my business unit success. How do we eliminate, eliminate the... Uh, the concern that that uh, the teams have with the uh, with the with the data platform team to deliver to their to their business uh, business needs. So that's another challenge that we have to uh, we had to um, uh, we had to address. So so how we uh, how we solve. The, the, the challenges that I, I described, and, and I think that's where I wanted to, um, uh, to spend most of, uh, of, uh, of my time. So what you see here in front of you is our data platform or, 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 or Delta Lake architecture. Um, so let me address first how we solve the, the stay out of my way right uh, uh, approach that the teams have had uh, when we try to convince them to come to the to the data platform um, we selected a hub and spoke architecture and uh, this architecture allow us to really build framework uh, provide support to all the spokes and but let them build the specific that they need to build in order for uh, delivering to their business. So that was a first important decision that we uh, that we made that we made. Um, this, uh, in addition to the the, the hub and spoke, also allow us to um, what we call to do a federated. Uh, federated development, and I think uh, the J JPMC said said the same thing in the uh, in the um, in a, 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 a co in a, a keynote uh, presentation. Uh, federated development is is key to a company with the size of ADP. Um, um, there is no way we can scale up as the the hub. So now my team maintaining the hub and all the different teams acting like a spoke to, uh, to the hub. There is no way the hub team can scale up to do everything that needed to be done with data in ADP. So hub and spoke, so, so it's important for us to really enable the spoke to, to do what they need to do with, frame, with the right framework, the right tools, and the support that they need uh, to learn how to operate within the within the hub. Um, so I don't have a, a pointer, but I just wanted to describe to you a little bit uh, this complex picture. Um, so when you look at the dotted dotted line, the big dotted line, this is ADP as a whole. 
So ADP as a whole, we have a data governance team, and uh, uh, we have a catalog that goes, that goes not only on the data platform, but across all ADP. But then, if you can see, there is a, a red, uh, red kind of uh, uh, open, you know, uh, that says spoke, spoke domain. What this trying to, uh, trying to describe is that the spokes involved in both sides of the data platform. The ingestion side, as well as the consumption side. So Spoke can use a um, framework to ingest data into the platform. And obviously, they can use all the technology that we offer to them, and we'll go over this, to consume the data on the other side. Um, so federated development, uh, uh, hub and spoke uh, architecture are key. But then we made another decision here that I think helped Spoke to be independent. And that, that, that was very, very uh, uh, clear demand that we had on our platform. As you can see there, there are two, two types of storage. Um, there is, there is the, the Spoke 1 and Spoke 2 and Spoke 3 and Spoke 4 type of storage, which we call it private, private storage. And then we have the, the one in the middle, which called share, share data, which is the shared storage. Um, let me explain a little bit uh, the difference between these two. We realize that, that sometimes spoke will need to bring in data that have very little interest of any other spoke. So when they want to do this, we want to give them all the freedom in the world to, to, you know, to bring in the data, to, to, to uh, uh, utilize the data the way they want to utilize it without all the overhead that we, we provide the team in order to put data in the shared, uh, shared data in order to share them with other, other spoke. So they can, you can look at it as, a, as a their piece of storage that they actually own. No, no other spoke can access their, their stor storage. And that allow them to build a lot of, uh, a lot of data assets with, uh, with very little involvement uh, from the hub. Um, so as you can see, uh, we, have, we have provided to the spoke several framework that allow them to ingest the data. Uh, we, we created framework that allow them to uh, uh, do streaming ingestion, micro batch ingestion, uh, DMS, uh, everything that require from the spoke only only configuration, no, uh, no, uh, no code required for, for this ingestion. And they can use, the, they can use this uh, ingestion um, uh, for their uh, private data as well as, as well as the shared data. Uh, on the other side, as you can see, the, the spoke can actually uh, consume the data in many, many ways. Uh, uh, they can use it, can use, we're talking about, about Databricks, um, but um, Spoke can, can actually use, obviously, Databricks, creating uh, uh, machine learning or creating uh, any data application, dashboards, creating SQL uh, endpoints, uh, uh, anything that Databricks can offer, uh, they can use. They can also um, mingle using Databricks and, 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 and mesh, data mesh, between uh, uh, the data that exists in their private uh, repository as well as, as uh, data that exists in a shared uh, share, uh, share data. So 
so that's, that's the, the, the architecture from ingesting data and, and consuming data. Um, but yet, still, when you, when you try to bring teams, and that's, the, that's one of the challenges that I mentioned before, you bring teams on, into this, this uh, architecture, it's, it's still a challenge. And I can say that um, Databricks help us with, with, this, uh, with this challenge. Why? Because uh, Databricks, in a way, is the face of this platform. The first thing that, that uh, a spoke team um, experience when they start to use this, this platform is, is Databricks. And the fact that, that teams across IDP really, really like to work on Databricks help us a lot to become popular, I should say, across ADP and have a lot of teams in ADP um, uh, over time trying to get into this uh, platform um, um, and, and right now, actually, we have uh, almost uh, 60 teams that, that operating on this, uh, on this platform. So, so that's about uh, uh, Databricks. The other uh, advantage that Databricks gave us in this platform is the ability to support not only the programmer, uh, 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 the, the, the data scientist uh, persona, but any persona, the, the data scientists, the, the, the software engineers, the business analysts that, that can only deal with uh, SQL uh, and, and, and uh, that only needs to build dashboards. Uh, we, we could use dashboards on Databricks itself or we can use dashboards using Power BI or, or uh, Tableau. Um, so it, it provides support for many level of uh, usage in, in this platform. The other challenge, how we solve the other challenge of the governance that we, uh, uh, how, we cha how we solve the, the, the challenge of uh, making sure that the right people have access to the right data and the right people can see only the data that they allow to see and don't, uh, they are not exposed to a PII, SPII. So we use, uh, we use uh, together with Databricks, we use uh, a, a company, um, a tool that called Emuda. Anybody familiar with Emuda here? So Emuda is, is, uh, is, is, uh, is a piece of software that actually sits in the Databricks clusters, and based on policies that, that, uh, that we provide to Emuda on every, every user that's trying to access the data, um, Emuda uh, determine if the user can see, the, can have access to this table, can have access to this column, or can see this column in the clear or can see this column uh, as it uh, anonymized or, or, or encrypted. So Emuda is, uh, is, um, is, a, is a key tool that complement uh, Databricks to allow us to do, uh, to do governance. Um, and I will just mention two more things in the, um, uh, at the bottom. Um, you know, if you bring data into a central place and uh, you don't, you're not making sure that the data architecture, the data structure in this repository is, is correct, the naming convention is correct, over time, I think you'll find out that your, your platform is completely in disarray, it completely, um, you know, people cannot find their way across the data. Data is a, is a, is a tricky thing. If you don't pay attention to the data, it's going out of hand, uh, especially when you deal with, with petabytes. Um, so um, we have a whole team, that, that uh, whole team, so only maybe five people, 
they're dealing with data architecture. They own the content of the platform. They make sure that every table that's available for consumption has the right name, the column has the right name. We don't have a column in two different tables that are, there are duplicate that uh, we, with slightly different name. Um, they take care of the quality. They take care of the uh, enhancement to the data uh, in, in, in ADP. Some, some SORs can provide you, uh, you know, um, a, a client, client ID. Some SOR do not give you client ID. So uh, they take care of uh, enhancing the data to, to provide to the consumer side um, um, uh, consistent client ID so they don't have to deal with, with uh, different sources and different handling. Um, so the data architecture um, is, in my mind, very, very important. So now we have to build this, this platform and framework and, and support, you know, a lot of spokes uh, with, with, you know, big data engineers uh, and, and, and Databricks uh, uh, engineers, which, as you can see in the, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in every opportunity, everybody is looking for engineers, right? That says, please uh, apply. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say, please apply to ADP2. Um, but scale up with talented and skillful uh, engineers is is definitely a challenge uh, in a short period of time and uh, then we made another decision to get engaged with uh, Empedis who uh, actually uh, able to to stuff our project with uh, architect level uh, people and uh, and uh, uh, help us really to deliver all of this in, in, a, in a timely manner and uh, with the right architecture. So I'd like to invite uh, Chetan to, um, to take you through the, um, the impetus uh, uh, contribution to this. Right. Thank you, Zaf. I'll start with uh, briefly introducing Impetus to all of you, uh, and then we'll delve into a little bit of the details. So Impetus, we are a data and cloud engineering company and with three major focus areas, modernization, unification, and innovation. And when we say modernization, it is all about modernizing data platforms, data assets, applications, when we talk about unification, it is through our cloud and data engineering services providing unification to customers' environments. And then innovation, essentially creating the data products as well as helping customers with AI and ML services to build innovative applications which can support the business. <clears throat> now, a little bit of the facts about Impetus. We have decades of relationship with our customers. Uh, we have 20 plus Fortune 100 customers in the portfolio, and that number is, is growing. Uh, we have global presence. We are present in United States. We are present in Canada. We have sales presence in uh, EMEA as well as Australia. We are present in six major cities in India from development perspective. Our development centers are in six major cities in India. We are 3,000 plus employees company. Uh, over two decades, we have actually created five products. So we see and, uh, that a product engineering and innovation is part of our DNA. So even we are providing services to our customers, the first thing that comes to mind is how we add value, how we create value to the customers. We are amongst 25 great places to work for in India and tech. Now if I talk about our Databricks partnership, we are a light partner to Databricks and uh, and there was an announcement yesterday. Uh, we have been the, uh, the migration partner of the year uh, for Databricks in the America region. 
uh, we are one of the uh, we are one of the uh, you know uh, first partners who created the brick builder solution to migrate to to the delta uh, on databricks and we are also a specialized partner on the hadoop uh, migration side uh, moving on uh, okay so why we are here because we are in the era of uh, uh, data and ai and that's why it's a data and ai summit and uh, everyone understands and every uh, enterprise wants to monetize the data now in, in the morning keynote i heard that technology is becoming very very easily available to every enterprise but what is differentiating is the data that they hold how quickly they can monetize their data in their own context and, and use that data at their advantage. So at Impetus, uh, we have been helping customers again to create platforms ground up right from zero. And these platforms have scaled. As Zaf was mentioning, that the DDP platform holds multi-petabytes of data, tens of petabytes of data. And we have repeatedly achieved it for many of our customers. They, but there is a second segment of customers where I see customers come to us where they are dealing with certain challenges on the platform side. The platform is not scaling. Maybe it's not cost efficient. Maybe there are some other issues. So the, in the essence, there are certain problems with the platform. Now I'll quote Ali, who also mentioned yesterday that creation of the platform is not an easy ask. It is time consuming ask. It takes time to create the right platform and mature the right platform. And that is where at Impetus, we have also created a framework called Data Platform Maturity Model. And essentially, it's a holistic framework to implement the best practices across 360 degree uh, maturity model across all the dimensions that, that you see on the slide. So our engineers essentially use this framework. They assess the current platform state architecture. They provide the roadmap of how the platform can be evolved and taken to the best and the highest level of maturity in the context of customer's business. Okay. Now coming to ADP again. <clears throat> again, Zap already outlined so, uh, and already created uh, and very simplistic way explained the, the, the complex, uh, you know, the architecture that ADP has. Uh, but the whole story started for impetus uh, and ADP in this engagement, this particular use cases with few basic problems. ADP's data was coming from multiple data sources. Uh, they had data quality challenges, as Zaf already uh, pointed out. At the same time, ADP also wanted to implement the role-based access control at every stage of processing. Uh, so Impetus team looked at the architecture. They assessed it and proposed uh, multi-hop medallion architecture, uh, where there are three different zones of data that have been created. The bronze zone, which will hold the raw data as is, without touching anything. The silver layer will hold the cleansed, joined, and transformed data, which will be available for self-service analytics, as well as uh, it will be available for all sorts of ad hoc reporting. And gold layer will hold the business aggregated data, enriched, as well as denormalized for fast access, as business users would need certain uh, you know, reports to be delivered within a fraction of uh, time within seconds and minutes. Uh, in terms of data ingestion, uh, data was coming from a variety of legacy systems. So we use AWS DMS to get the data onto S3. Then the data will uh, the data is loaded onto the delta tables, and as soon as the data is loaded onto delta tables, these that those uh, data files are actually archived and moved to the archive folder. Uh, once the data is available in the data folder, uh, data tables, the, uh, the notebooks can access the data using uh, the Delta APIs. And when we cleanse, transform, and curate this data, that is done using the Spark APIs. So every time the, de uh, the data is moved from one level to the next level, uh, essentially the key component that is used is the Delta APIs. Now, <clears throat> I'm only pointing out here how the first problem that we looked at and how we actually got the data into the system. But if you see uh, the overall architecture that Zaf presented, it actually paints the whole picture in terms of where it started and what platform is supporting at this point. So with that, I'll stop. 
and we'll be happy to answer any questions. Zaf, yeah, you can join me. Yeah. Is that working? Okay. Um, so if if anyone has any questions, uh, we will be yeah. happy happy to answer. I think one thing that I probably didn't mention is the global nature of our platform. Um, and that's another, uh, another uh, advantage that uh, Databricks gave us. Um, so ADP is a, is a multi-country, uh, multinational uh, company, and we have data uh, in Europe, we have data in Australia, we have data in Canada. The data cannot leave those, those countries. Um, and our ability to really build this platform where uh, we, we can provide the same services that we provide in the U.S. in all of these countries um, is, is critical. And, and I think the, 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 the capability of Databricks to be, um, to be deployed in many, many uh, uh, you know, AWS uh, uh, office is, is critical for us to be able to make this platform a global platform in a way. Um, any, uh, any questions? Yep. Uh, the one that I showed from the framework perspective? No, the framework is actually generic enough. Uh, it's essentially uh, any data platform architecture that has to be laid out, it has to have the critical components and the best practices needs to be incorporated. So it's generic enough. But the way our team views is every COE leverages the same platform and marries that with the technology that they, that they are experts into and, create and delivers the end platform for the customer. So I would say that uh significant number of the ingestion framework and the uh, capability for data consumption is framework that build within Databricks. It doesn't mean that, you know, these frameworks can only use Databricks, but right now we use Databricks heavily to, um, to do this framework. When, right. when Chaitan talk about uh, uh, the bronze, silver, and gold, this is all Databricks process, um, you know, to, to, to process the data and bring, bring uh, the data into the, uh, the Delta file. Uh, and, and, and the Delta, uh, the Delta format is, is basically uh, the format that we choose. And we were very, very glad now to hear that, because this was one of our problems, because uh, not a lot of other technology can access the, the yeah. Delta file. The fact now that uh, those uh, Delta format is now will support a lot of the other uh, file format is huge for us. Yep. And open up uh, the, the capability uh, to use, at least on the consumption side, uh, to use many, many other tools.